The Mini 4 Pro and Air 3 are excellent drones for time lapses and hyperlapses, thanks to the hyperlapse waypoint mode and the long battery life, especially on the Air 3. Shooting hyperlapses at night is not easy, but it is great fun and can produce astonishing results if done correctly. In this video I will show you how to get the best results. In hyperlapses it is crucial to have elements in motion, usually vehicles, people walking or clouds. The aircraft movement will be an extra dynamic element. In the case of night hyperlapses, the most exciting results are obtained when shooting at dusk, during the blue hour after sunset, with a mixture of natural and artificial light, as the transition of the light adds extra interest. I will use waypoint hyperlapse with just two points to simplify the process. The idea is to start with a view of this village at the foot of Mount Etna in Sicily to get some traffic and artificial light. We will be facing the direction of the setting sun. To avoid overexposure, I will set the first waypoint with the camera facing down toward the center of the village. For the second one, I will frame Mount Etna. During the hyperlapse, the software will handle the smooth transition between the two points. I hope to get some nice clouds above the mountain and maybe some volcanic action if we are lucky. A great feature of Waypoint Hyperlapse is that it stores each mission in memory. This allows us to perform the same mission at different times or modify the settings to get the best results. It simplifies the setup, thus saving precious battery life. If you want to know more about Waypoint Hyperlapse, you can watch my video about it by clicking on the link on the screen. I will use the Mini 4 Pro, but this technique is identical for both models. The Air 3 has a battery life of 46 minutes versus 34 for the Mini 4 Pro, a big advantage for hyperlapses. There is a special battery for the Mini 4 Pro with the same flying time as the Air 3, but sadly it is not available in Europe. I suggest getting one if you are interested in hyperlapses. After setting the two waypoints, we have to choose the interval in seconds between each photo and the length of the resulting short movie. The interval determines the speed of the element in motion. When the movement comes from people walking or cars, I suggest an interval of 2 or 3 seconds. At 3 seconds the movement will be faster, I will show you the results with both values later on. Regarding length, I prefer a final movie of 12 seconds or more. We need at least 300 shots, as the automatic hyperlapse generated by the app has a frequency of 25 frames per second. 300 frames divided by 25 frames per second equals 12 seconds. With an interval of 2 seconds, the shooting process for 300 frames takes 10 minutes, as 300 by 2 seconds equals 600 seconds. With an interval of 3 seconds, it will take 15 minutes, which is the limit of what we can get with the regular battery of the Mini 4 Pro, considering the time for setting up the shot and returning home. Another crucial value is the shutter speed, to get the correct amount of motion blur. To simplify, I suggest setting a shutter speed of 1 second for drone hyperlapses, although we can use a slightly shorter shutter speed if needed, up to 1 fourth of a second. With such a long shutter speed, in most cases we need a set of ND filters, but in low light condition we can sometimes do without them. The ISO value can be kept at the minimum of 100, but we can raise it to 400 if needed, without a noticeable loss of quality. We have a bit of room for maneuver. To know more about the importance of motion blur and shutter speed, I suggest watching my specific video about time lapses and hyperlapses. You will find the link at the end of this video. For best results, I generally process the individual photos with Luminar Neo, my favorite photo editing program. I then export them to a video editor. But in this video, I will use the movie Automatic Generated by the app to simplify. You will find info about Luminar Neo in the description of this video. You can watch my video about it by clicking on the link on the screen.
The transition from sunset to night takes less than an hour here in Sicily, as we are relatively close to the equator. During the 15 minutes of the shooting process, the luminosity decay is massive. In Northern Europe or Canada, the transition takes well over two hours, so the shooting process is much simpler. We must aim for a bright exposure in the first frames, so that we get enough light toward the end. Choosing the exact moment to start the hyperlapse is crucial for the correct luminosity. Starting 10 minutes too early or too late can be fatal. The best moment to start is approximately 15 minutes after sunset, right after the street lights are turned on. Since each mission is stored in memory, it is easy to reshoot the same hyperlapse the next day, a few minutes earlier or later if needed. We are ready for action. For the first one, I'm shooting at sunset. The sun will be in front of me. This makes things harder, as the decaying luminosity will be higher. I put the bird up in the air and set the first waypoint looking down to the center of the village to avoid the luminosity from the area next to the sun. I move backward to the left, lower the elevation and turn the camera to frame Mount Etna. I set the interval to 3 seconds and the length to 14 seconds, although I will probably have to stop it a bit earlier as I'm wasting some time setting up the shot, while in the next one I will be able to use the save mission. I set the shutter speed at 1 second and ISO to 100. From the view on the screen I can see that the first part of the movie might be a touch overexposed, but let's see what happens. Sunset time is at 4.46 and I press red shutter at 5.05 to start the shooting process. I have to stop after 270 photos for a safe return to home, so the movie will be shorter than planned, but it will be easier next time, as the mission is now stored in memory. The result is acceptable, but the first part with the street lights is a touch overexposed, as expected. I have two options the next time. I can start a few minutes later, or start at the same time and use a slightly faster shutter speed to reduce the luminosity. I like the motion blur on the cars due to the correct shutter speed of 1 second, so I will hope for a later starting time. The next day I went back to work, the settings are the same, but this time I start 8 minutes later at 5.13. The streetlights and the car are now perfectly exposed and I'm happy with the results. There is also a nice cloud cover over Mount Etna to add depth to the scene. I would prefer a longer hyperlapse, but I'm limited by the battery. The next day I choose an interval of 2 seconds between each photo. With this interval it is possible to take 450 images in 15 minutes for a longer movie of 18 seconds. The downside is that cars and cloud will move at a slower speed. At this interval we cannot select a shutter speed of 1 second, as the program needs some time to buffer each shot. I opt for 1 quarter of a second, which implies slightly less motion blur. The resulting movie is much longer now, so I often use this method with the Mini 4 Pro and the standard battery. The car's movement and the motion blur are acceptable, although I prefer the result obtained with the interval of 3 seconds and the shutter speed of 1 second. So, when I use the R3 or the special battery for the Mini 4 Pro, I opt for the traditional settings, as I'm not limited in the length of the movie. The next morning I decided to try the same thing at sunrise. A sunrise is basically a sunset upside down, so the process is the same, but the luminosity will increase during the shooting, instead of decreasing. I keep the same setting as the previous one, interval of 3 seconds, length of 14, shutter speed of 1 seconds, and ISO 100. This time I got 330 photos, so the resulting movie will be longer. Good. Something unexpected happened, as the drone was drifting unusually during the shooting process, so there is some visible warping even after stabilizing. 
This is unexpected, as I have done the same hyperlapse several times in the past with the Mini 4 Pro, and it never happened. Apart from that, I'm happy with the results. Click on this link to watch my video about waypoint hyperlapses with the Mini 4 Pro or the Air 3. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.